All right, so here we are in Stable Diffusion. We're using Draw Things on a Mac. There's a couple different options that you can use for the Mac. Draw Things and Diffusion B. I prefer to have Draw Things. It has more options like LoRa Control, which is something that I'll touch on but not really go over. So we're going to use this, the Juggernaut XL version 9 photo lighting model. There's a ton of different models out there. You can get the different models if you go to Civit AI, Civati. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but right there. I'm going to leave this in the description below, and you guys can go through and play around with different models. But I really like this one because it's very active. You can see they're at version 10. They have a lot of different options here. I really like the photo lighting myself. And the other thing, too, that they have is prompting guides, detail prompting guides. These are really clutch because it helps you to understand how the model works, why it works the way that it does, and how to get the best out of what you're trying to do. So one of the best ways to get started is to go into a model and look at the pictures and see what you would like to replicate, just trying to learn it. So for this tutorial, I tried to do this frog Batman. And over here, you can see the prompt that they used, the negative prompt, the model, the CFG scale, the steps, the sampler, and the seed. So what I did is I pulled this into Stable Diffusion, and this is what I got. Using all the same settings that they had, this is what I had. The only difference was that my Sampler is a little bit different, and I think that's because I'm on a Mac. I have SDE Keras, and they just have SDE. Very, very similar, though. Very good results. And if I ran this a few more times, I'd probably get something even more similar to what they had, which was this guy. So one of the things you need to keep in mind with Stable Diffusion is you're never going to get the exact same image. The way that a Diffusion image works is it's almost like a Warshak test, a very blurry Warshak test and you'll have spots all over the background, and then it slowly and methodically will create the image from those spots. There's a whole process, we're not really gonna get into it, but that's where the seed comes in. So this image here started with the same seed, the same spots as the one over here on the website. Even though it started with the same seed and it had the same settings, I had tried another version, Square, which changes how much space it has to work with. So the seed generation is going to work a little bit differently. I also had a preset on it, the DMT art style preset, which is a little bit more kind of psychedelic. It's an awesome result, but it wasn't, it wasn't this guy. Okay, so let's work through the process here. We're going to go back down here and start from scratch and start where I started when I was trying to make a mimic. So you can see here we have the model. When you want to load up the model, you have a couple different options. You can save it to your computer and then load it up in here. You just tell it where it is. Or the easier way would be to go here where this little download arrow is. Click up here, enter URL, and put in the URL that I gave you. Hit continue and it'll start to download it. If this doesn't default to 1024 by 1024, you're gonna to wanna to change that because that's what Juggernaut XL was trained on were those 1024 by 1024 images. So here you can see that I have a much bigger prompt. A bigger prompt does not necessarily mean that it's a better prompt. We got awesome results on that Batman frog with just a few words. This one was a little bit too complicated I'm not going to read you all this, but what I will say is that I knew that this wasn't working quite right because of the adventure. I had the adventurer's arm is half swallowed. So I just removed everything that had to do with the adventurer. And now it's a more simple prompt and a little more focused. So I started to get better results. So you can see these guys are, are pretty awesome. Now the only thing that's changing on these is the seed here and the preset. You don't need to use presets. The frog that I showed you a minute ago doesn't have a preset on it. 
it just kind of gives it a little extra emphasis on the direction that you want to go. So I'll show you that in a minute. So this one is just dark fantasy. This one is a smaller, more focused font. Still dark fantasy, and I got a lot closer to what I wanted. Same thing. So what I did here was I just told it to make a whole bunch of them. So you can say, I want to make six of them at a time. This here will only make one at a time, but you can walk away from your computer and it'll make however many you tell it to make. Here, if you wanted to make multiples at the same time, you could say, I want to do two at a time and run it once. So this one will be multiplied by however many you have here. So if I did two here, then two times two would be four. I get four images by the time I walk back to my computer. If you don't have a powerful computer, I'd say just do one at a time and then hit generate. So you can see here, I changed it over to macabre, however you pronounce that. This one is dark and moody atmosphere, and this one is dark fantasy. They're all very, very similar. There's slight changes but they all influence how this looks with the lighting and everything. So then I went back to the dark and moody atmosphere because I really liked that style. I liked the results that I was getting with that, the way that the teeth were showing and the rest of the trunk felt more like a trunk. So I kept it with dark and moody and making a new seed on generation. So each time it hit that number, the next one would automatically make a new seed. So I would get a different result. You can see these are pretty awesome. They're pretty epic. I think that I keep this on dark and moody for a little bit. The thing that I changed here was I went vertical instead of horizontal. And I had changed from horizontal. I went from square to horizontal here just to get a little bit of a different kind of vibe, make a longer chest as, a, as opposed to a squattier chest. That does not always mean that's going to happen because you can see that this one is pretty squatty but I still love it. <laughs> this is pretty epic. So here we are still going. This is still dark and moody, but I do end up changing it in just a couple photos here, but you can see, I just ran a whole bunch of them at this point. And this is the last one at dark and moody. It kind of made this stabby tongue, <laughs> which I like, uh, but I decided to change over to DMT art style. So you can see that this one's a little bit more kind of psychedelic. And so it added a lot more flair to the colors. This one, I changed to dripping paint splatter. So it's influenced more like that. You can kind of see it looks like there's like congealed dripping paint here. And this one is glow -fi. And this one I really liked. I really liked this one because of the glow. And I know that I can pull this into Photoshop and really intensify this. I really liked this and I really liked how the trunk's face was kind of coming out of the trunk. The trunk opened. So what I did here was instead of the default text to image, I went image to image. And then I just kept going with the generation. That's the only change that I made here. And so what it came up with here was this guy very similar. This has a dagger here. Obviously the shape of this is so very similar. This had some bones or something here. It ignored this stuff here and the background got changed a little bit, but by default, it's at 70% strength. And if you go up here to any of these little icons, these little eye information icon, you can see what it what it's telling you each thing means. So this says 100% means no influence from the existing image, aka text to image. So if this was at 100%, then it's the same thing as saying text to image. But I really liked this shape. So I went one more time and I changed it back to macabre. And you can see this is not nearly as intense. There's still some glowing, but it's not as intense as this here or even that there. And so this one I changed over to Terrigen, Terrigen, I'm not sure, but you can see there's all sorts of presets and you'd be surprised at how the presets work with different prompting and different models. 
So this might react this way for this prompt in this model, but if I used a different one that wasn't a photo lighting style, maybe like an anime style model, these things will act very differently, possibly. So we talked about the positive prompts. The negative prompts are just things that you don't want to see. So you don't want it to be low contrast. You don't want it to be blurry. You don't want it to be noisy. Deformed and ugly, I wouldn't mind because of what this is. But this, if you don't put a negative prompt in here, that's going to be dictated by the preset. It'll automatically add in or change depending on what you have for the preset. So the last image here is the same as the one from a minute ago, except it's been upscaled, which we're not going to go over here. There are many more features to Stable Diffusion, but this is just an overview video. I don't want to go too far into the weeds. Just know that you can get amazing results with using all sorts of different models. You don't have to use the one that I'm using. That's just the one that I really like. It goes with my style. And be sure to read whatever the model developer tells you is the best as far as steps and text guidance, because more doesn't mean better in either one of these. Now, one last thing that you have to keep in mind is where these get saved to. So if you go to advanced and you scroll all the way down, you'll see save generated images to, and this is where they get saved. I'm sure you guys have a ton of different questions, so go ahead and throw them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. But until next time, be good to each other.